Hello and welcome to Wild Owl TV. Blimey, one minute it feels like we're in Siberia, the next minute it's like I'm in Tenerife. It's just amazing today, but the snow is still on the ground. Now, it's been an amazingly exciting few days. It's obviously been very disruptive to anybody outside of their homes, but if, like me, you've been just stuck at home enjoying what's going on in your garden, then you would have been seeing all sorts of birds coming into the garden that you might not have seen before, including, of course, those wonderful field fairs. So, as predicted, because the weather now has got milder, there's not a field fair in sight. There was 30 or 40 in my garden. I know many of you were reporting sightings in your garden. So that really was something to enjoy while it lasted. And I'm afraid to say, unless we have a similar sort of weather um, this year, which is unlikely, you're not going to see those birds for a long time unless you go somewhere else to see them. However, before this snow melts, I'm just having a little look, look around the garden because um, it has, the garden now is obviously recovering. And the funny thing is, is while those field fairs were in the garden and um, one or two other birds I'd not seen uh, very often, I noticed that my resident birds weren't so obvious and you may have noticed in my videos there was a bit of an absence of, and my photographs, of the robins. And the funny thing was, is while the garden had this influx of visitors, the robins seemed to stay away and then now they've all gone, suddenly I'm seeing the robin again. The other thing that I noticed quite understandably was there was very little mammal activity including the badgers and even the foxes there was no footprints in the snow however this morning I'm just coming in and just like say in the garden doing a few bits and bobs having a little look around and I noticed there are some tracks now I had the camera set up last night and I didn't see anything in the cameras but if I come down here you'll notice that there are some big footprints now, in the absence of yetis, abom abominable snowmans, of course, I suspect this is badger prints because they're quite large. And if we... Now, I'm no expert on animal tracks and signs, but let's have a look. If you have a look there, you can see definite claw marks. In fact, even better still on that one there. And the other clue that it's the badgers is the fact that this goes through past my electric fence which I hasten to add has not been switched on for quite some time but there's another story on that one of course I didn't switch it on when the badgers are coming and going so I can move that out of the way and that's where these animals have been coming through in that little area there so really interesting also it looks like it's come around here and gone down through there, which again, for me, it's quite a deep footprint, which suggests, again, it's quite a heavy animal, and I'm pretty certain that's badgers. I'm gonna get my book out and have a look. So, never really done animal tracks and signs in the garden, but in when you've got snow, it really does give you uh, some extra information. And the thing to remember, just get out of this little corner, the thing to remember is that if you can use the snow to see what particularly larger animals are coming into your garden, you know what their route is. So if you know what their route is, you can then start to plan how you can feed them, how you can almost like direct them into areas you want to feed them, um, and then gradually tempt them down into areas of the garden that you'd rather um, have them. So you can observe them and maybe photograph them or film them like I do. So just a little quick video post here, um, just to say that um, I've got lots of film. I've still got the waterfall video to post, and of course I've got some new footage now for that. And I've got a fat feeder video to post, which I'm excited about, because there's some lovely looking birds on the fat feeder videos. Um, and also, I plan to do a little short video about the cameras that I use in the garden because it's nothing special. Um, I'm on a limited budget, but luckily I do have uh, some useful gear uh, that I use um, and uh, one particular item that I don't use very much because it's a load of crap. I'll talk about that another time. <laughs> Once again, just my personal experiences. So there we go. Um, the snow's melting. I hope you're not getting flooded out because that is the other side of things. We're very lucky here where we live because we don't suffer from that. Um, what is happening um, is the snow is melting. That's uh, probably a hedgehog still hiding away in there. And as you can see, the pond now um, is <coughs> gradually the appearance is changing and those apples that were on there for the uh, for the thrushes the uh, field fairs they're now stuck on the pond so I'm going to get the net in a minute and get them off because I don't want to tempt anything onto the pond uh, 
certainly not when the ice gets a bit uh, a bit thin but the main thing is the waterfall is running and the birds have water naturally for me again so i am going to finish now i always ramble on don't i thanks very much for watching wild owl tv and i will just squeeze into the end of this little uh, vlog which i'm going to call i must need to start calling vlogs now don't i, I need to get up to date um Thank you so much for all the shares again. I cannot believe how that simple video, when I was there thinking I was talking to a few people around Yates in my local area about feeding the birds in the garden, has gone ballistic. Um, and it's been viewed two and a half thousand times um, and shared nearly a hundred times. So thank you for doing that because at the end of the day, whether it's, it's not, as I say, a completely comprehensive video, but the main thing is, I, you know, is what makes me feel really good, good about these things is that it has informed lots of people that aren't birders, they're not experienced uh, wildlife people. And just to make a difference there uh, makes it all worthwhile and every share has reached more people. So I'm really grateful for that. Thank you as always. And it inspires me to keep on doing Wild Owl TV. Um, and um, we've got lots to look forward to this year. So if you're new to Wild Owl TV, have a look at some of my older um, videos are either on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, Twitter, I don't do Twitter simply because I haven't got enough hours in the day and it's a work-life balance uh, because none of this makes me any money so I have to go out and earn money as well with my talks and school visits uh, so please promote people point in my way if you if you want a school visit or a talk um, and um, but otherwise uh, have a look at those videos because there's lots of information but we do have lots to look forward to and as I'm talking to you one of my favorite little birds has just I just ooh, just missed it <laughs> oh no there's another one on there is that, that one or was it no, it's a leaf. Hard to see through this viewfinder. That was a gold crest. But anyway, very high-pitched little squeak. I'm doing it again. I'm rambling on. I'm going. Thanks for watching Wild Out TV. See you. So he's back. <laughs> no, I'm not going to see you soon. I'm going to see you now. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, he's going down now. He doesn't find it. This is what's going on. This garden's coming alive again. Where are you, Mr. Gold Crest? You're ruining my video. He's not going to be on the Niger because I don't go on Niger. He is down there somewhere. Let's go and see if we... Oh. It's my video. I'll do what I want, all right? There he is. They're very confiding. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. They're stunning little birds. They really are so confiding. This is a little gold crest. Where are you gone now? I can hear him. I can hear him. He's there somewhere. They really are stunning little birds. I wonder if they're going to nest this year. Oh, we can see some movement in there. There he is. Where are you? I've got you. He's in there. There's a lot of gold crests in Yates in this surrounding area. It really is surprising. I'm just going to see if we can show you this bird. As you can tell, he's not at all worried about the fact that I'm here because they really are very confiding. There he is, up on the fence. So, focus your camera. <laughs> I think we're going to have to edit this film. Welcome back, and there's our gold crest. I've just spent the last 10 minutes chasing him around the garden. And he's picking up bits of uh, fat, I suspect, off of the fat feeders. And one of the things that I've installed in the garden, I'm, so we're not ending this broadcast, by the way, as you might have guessed. <laughs> one of the things I've done in the garden here is I've installed predator netting. To me, to be more precise, cat netting. And all along, um, where are you? All along my fence here, I've got a very fine mesh. Now it's not a large mesh, and that's very important because hedgehogs and birds could get fouled up in a large um, aperture netting. So very important that you have very, very fine netting. And this is very fine netting. Stunning little birds these are, where are you? Oh, that's better, go on the fence. He's being so, he's being awkward. This is a gold crest, oh, he's gone. And um, this netting, <laughs> by the way, welcome to part two. <laughs> this netting is 
like this. Very, 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 very fine. I don't know if you can see that. That's really fine. Now this is actually netting that is sold to go around scaffolding to protect any pedestrians. So it's extremely fine. Look how fine this is. So it has no, uh, there's no danger. The birds won't get caught in it. And my use this and same netting on my owl avers. But what it means is that when you have a bird feeding on the ground, like I did there with that little gold crest, a predator like a cat, and it's going to be, cats are going to be the main risk to this little bird, it can actually pounce on it because if you put your netting around, even if you made your own little um, almost enclosure where you're feeding the birds, a cat would have to go up over the top of the netting, which is unlikely to do, um, and it's going to give the birds just a split second to get out of the of the grasp of that cat's claw. So I like this, this stuff, and I've been using this in the garden, and it's worked really well, and I'm going to put this around the garden, so I also use it to block off um, places. So once again, like in here, where I've got a little wood pile here, uh, sorry, a, a, a stone pile, it's my brain again working backwards, um, uh, and it's, um, it's there to just prevent the cats hiding in here or just running out and pouncing. So this is what I've done all the way along here underneath the feeders. So that is another top tip from Wild Out TV. I am going now and as always I've rambled on. So thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some new posts. Bye for now. Bye.